Welcome, everybody, to Web and Beyond Live for November 30th, 2020. I'm Ray Sidney Smith, president of W3 Consulting and managing director of W3C Web Services, which provides affordable managed WordPress and web hosting, domain name registrations, and other web-related services for small business. And uh, this is my time to come to you each week and talk to you about the latest news in digital marketing that affects small businesses. And sometimes I talk about productivity technologies and cybersecurity and other kinds of topics. And uh, this uh, week's episode is going to be all about social networking updates. I try to come to you once a month and kind of uh, compress together all of the various uh, social networking news that I've been reading or paying attention to over the past month. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the various social news uh, that's going on in the world and how it affects your small business. And uh, so what I want to do is to cover uh, these, hopefully in groupings, kind of talk about uh, TikTok and Snapchat and Facebook and uh, its uh, subsidiaries uh, together in, uh, in in groups. And uh, so let's first start off with Snapchat with really um, what I would consider probably the biggest news uh, of the past uh, week, but now of the past month, uh, which is that Snapchat has launched uh, its own version of TikTok uh, within the Snapchat app. It's not a separate application. It's called Spotlight. And uh, and in essence, they are launching this program that is, uh, you know, they're going to spend, it, it looks like a million dollars per day through the end of the year, uh, where they are basically giving users a share of that million dollars per day to create this new form of videos. Uh, so in essence, think of them as uh, TikToks or as Instagram Reels, and they are giving people the opportunity to do that. So this is obviously a play by Snapchat to uh, regain some some of their current, um, you know, uh, loss of traffic because of TikTok's popularity. Uh, TikTok, of course, came into the news uh, because of the uh, political upheaval uh, around the tool. But uh, for the most part, they are on track, according to some uh, news records, that they're going to hit about 1.2 billion uh, users next year. Uh, so that is a huge uh, kind of uptick in uh, the number of users. Uh, in line with that, uh, recently, and I'm just going to bring this up on screen for the uh, for the fun of it. Um, but in, uh, in as a part of this, uh, Snapchat has also uh, made an acquisition. They have purchased a company called Voicey. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, Voicey is, in essence, giving uh, users the ability to uh, create their own tracks using uh, vocal effects of some kind. Uh, so this is, of course, a step into the TikTok space again, right? So you can see that this is probably a good move for them in order to uh, build up a, uh, a set of features that can great, gain parity with TikTok. Of course, uh, uh, TikTok uh, bought Musical.ly, which gave them that functionality to be able to remix music in, in their application. And it seems like Voicey has, has probably not the same functionality, but something similar to that in terms of voice effects and, uh, and voice vocal effects, giving them that capability. So just excited to see what, uh, you know, what they have in store for users in that regard. Uh, and then I'm looking to see if I had any other TikTok news. Oh yeah, so TikTok also, uh, while we're kind of in the Snapchat TikTok, TikTok space, uh, TikTok actually launched a, a, what they call a holiday playbook for small businesses. So this toolkit is available and I will put a link to this in uh, the video notes. Uh, in essence though, it's giving folks the ability to kind of review their uh, best practices, standards, whatever for using TikTok during the holiday season. So it's a, a little bit of a wonky site, so I'm not going to bring it up on screen because I'm having a problem even just looking at it. But it's a series of videos, and they walk you through uh, the different parts of how to use TikTok as a business. And I found some of the advice uh, fairly useful. Uh, they have some case studies in the little quote unquote playbook and uh, and then some checklists and resources associated with it. So just helpful to kind of check out and, uh, and see whether or not those things are gonna be useful for you. Okay, I wanna move over to uh, Facebook and Instagram and then we will move on to Twitter. So let me organize these pieces here just a little bit here. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, while I'm doing that, Facebook has uh, gone ahead and launched their, uh, um, their giving 
functions or fundraising and community assistance tools. Uh, they're calling this the season of giving. And, uh, and so it's allowing you to be able to uh, promote on your Facebook pages and in your Facebook groups, as long as well as with your profiles, if, uh, from an individual perspective, uh, to be able to promote the, uh, you know, to be able to, to be able to create fundraisers for um, nonprofit organizations and so on and so forth. Uh, it doesn't seem like you have the ability to choose uh, nonprofit organizations that are not in the system. I, I had a little difficulty with this uh, when I was testing this out uh, over the weekend. I was really trying to get uh, you know, a, a, a nonprofit organization that I wanted to give to in the system and it wasn't there. And I don't think that's uh, possible yet, but you can choose the ones that are of course in the system and, and do that. I'll, I'm going to look further to see if I can't find out a way to do that. Uh, but either way, so you have the fun, normal fundraiser tools, uh, and then, uh, this new one called Facebook drives, uh, which allows you to collect food, clothes, and other necessities for people in need. And that way you can distribute those to, uh, local food banks and local, uh, uh, you know, clothing shelter, local shelters, and, and so on and so forth to get that stuff out to uh, people in need. And uh, so Drives is rolling out. And uh, and then uh, there's another tool that they built, and I'm not seeing the name of it here. But either way, you'll see it actually show up in the panel. So when you open up Facebook, you'll see that right in the feed. And you'll be able to go ahead and uh, engage in the, uh, the new kinds of functions there uh, that they have for fundraising. Okay, uh, I had a few other pieces here. Oh yeah, so Facebook launched this new, uh, I don't wanna call it, uh, yeah, it's an application, uh, but they're they are calling it Egg. And I uh, don't quite know if I can explain it well enough, so I'm gonna show it. <laughs> uh, so this is, um, this is not the application, by the way, this is just the site about it. Uh, but in essence, when you go to e.gg, you are taken to this new, experimental uh, program and they explain to you what egg is. So in essence, egg allows you to create what in essence looks like stories type pages, but they're full screen pages where it's free form and you can just put all kinds of different content on the page. Again, I don't see how this is any different than a story except that they look like they're persistent. So you can create these pages you can share them and they seem like they last forever uh, inside of this application space. So again, going back to last week when we talked about Google Web Stories and the fact that they kind of, they, they are persistent and they stay around, uh, they don't clearly look like they advance yet. So that looks like they just are individual static pages and they don't move. Uh, this gives people the ability to create those kinds of pages. Again, this is an experimental app. So who knows where uh, this is going, uh, but it's just good to know that Facebook is experimenting with this, that it exists. If you want to install it, there is an iOS application. And so you can go ahead and check out the iOS application and get started with uh, playing with it and seeing if it's something that would even be useful for you or your audience. Next up, Instagram is testing a new um, FAQ option for direct interactions with business accounts. So you have to have an Instagram business account. It's very simple to do. You go to Instagram, go into your settings, and then you'll see an option to convert an Instagram profile to a business uh, profile. Once you have a business uh, profile, it'll add, ask you to, once you, when you go through the process, it'll pair it with a Facebook page. Uh, so you'll have to have that paired with a Facebook page. And now, uh, Instagram is testing this FAQ option. So uh, businesses will be able to provide uh, questions and answers within that FAQ section on the profile. Uh, this is very useful, obviously, because you probably get frequently asked questions. And, uh, and now you'll be able to go ahead and uh, provide those inside uh, the system. These can also uh, presumably uh, be pulled over to Facebook's similar feature in Messenger. So if you have a Facebook page and you have the Messenger, Messenger functions turned on, uh, you could have, in essence, templates of responses, questions and answers associated with those questions. And it kind of uses a little bit of uh, machine learning that if somebody asks a particular question that's similar, it shows that answer. And then if it's not the answer they want, they can go ahead and, uh, you know, have it answered by you, uh, uh, you know, a human. Uh, so I just think that's a, a really good um, step in that right direction. Something else that's going on is Facebook is now injecting machine learning into their content mod moderation. I, I think this is just really important for us to start paying attention to as small business owners. Uh, in essence, what that means is, is that they're using an algorithm to surface 
content that they believe should be flagged for human reviewers to review that content. This is going to create a whole bunch of problems, and I've already seen it start to. Uh, and so just beware that if you are getting content flagged uh, more often than you normally do, uh, that is because you may be mentioning things like COVID-19 or coronavirus or those kinds of things. Uh, so just be mindful that anything that's going to trigger them from uh, various words uh, that could be taboo, uh, you know, anything that could be uh, put together in a combination of, of phrases that um, can trigger the system, just be, be very mindful of the fact that they may get more flags and then be taken down for periods of time because the machine learning algorithm is learning, right? That's why it's called machine learning because it's learning from the content that's out there. And while Facebook has fed it data, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good data for your business. So just note that if you start to see your Facebook posts start getting flagged and taken down temporarily for human reviewers, uh, you're going to see more of that happen. And potentially for those businesses who are kind of skirting the rules and getting away with it, uh, now you're going to probably start to see more of that get caught um, by Facebook's software. And you will then uh, now be uh, put into a position where you have to justify uh, why you have those uh, content out there. Okay, very quickly, I also wanted to show uh, that Facebook has put out their own little, um, you know, holiday guide. Um, and this has five tips for creating strong brand awareness. And so it's just really good to, to pay attention to what Google is talking about in terms of best practices. And so the, their little guide here talks about these five items. One, give your brand a voice. They say, think about personifying your brand. And this makes a whole heck of a lot of sense, right? They ask some really key questions here. How does your brand impact the world and its customers? And for you, that should be, how does uh, your brand impact your local region. Uh, do not think about trying to eat an elephant. Uh, try and think about how you're um, winning your brand bite by bite, how you're winning your audience uh, and your market bite by bite. So think about this from a regional perspective. How does it affect your regional customers? And that doesn't mean that you can't have a large uh, you know, uh, jurisdiction that you cover. You can cover all the United States, but uh, people who are uh, in uh, New York are going to be very different than people who are in California. You need to make sure that you're working toward um, speaking to people in Texas versus people in uh, Michigan versus people in Montana, right? You need to break it down and make this more relatable. And personifying your brand means also personalizing. So giving your brand a voice means, uh, for me, um, think about how you're doing that, not just on Facebook, but elsewhere, how you're actually making that personal. Uh, and of course, consistency is key, they say here. Next, position your pro products. Um, Facebook and Instagram are visual platforms. They're really pushing this notion that text only is not the best way to position your products. You really need to start putting great photographs of your products and representative photographs of your services on Facebook and Instagram in order to make them more visible. So this is kind of their nod to the fact that if you're not putting images or video into your posts, they are going to be uh, you know, lowered in terms of visibility across all of the uh, ecosystem, across the platforms. So this is almost a point to say, these are requirements now. If you wanna be seen, put an image or video in your posts. Uh, say it with words. It says building your brand can't rely on visuals alone. And of course they wanna make sure that you're putting value propositions into, into your, in this case, they're talking about ads, but we can uh, extend this along to organic posts. And so your products need explanations. They need to have the understanding of your features and benefits in them. For me, I think that, um, you know, that, that, you are representing your products and services in its benefits uh, in social media and its features once people get to your website. So you need to be able to make sure that your landing pages not only speak to benefits, but also to features because you want to be able to get people to uh, be hooked uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and other social networks, but then you want to drive them to your website, to the properties that you own, where e-commerce can happen, where sales can happen, and uh, engage them in that process. They talk about branded packaging. That makes total sense. And then, of course, spend uh, strategically. Uh, if you're not running uh, retargeting campaigns or remarketing campaigns, those kinds of campaigns that basically follow your audience beyond just Facebook, uh, then you need to start doing so. And this is, again, their uh, note to you that that is important. So just important to pay attention to those uh, few points as it relates to Facebook's advertising. Uh, and, you know, I think they're all good points uh, that they make. Okay, 
So um, with that, we're going to take a quick turn to uh, WhatsApp, uh, just because Facebook owns WhatsApp, and they have now given just a small little feature here uh, that I think is really useful. So as you can see here, uh, uh, WhatsApp has gone ahead and given the capability of managing storage. So once upon a time, if you needed to uh, remove uh, data from the system. Um, it was a little bit cumbersome depending upon whether you're on iOS or Android. Now inside of the WhatsApp app, if you go to settings, storage and data, and then manage storage, you will now have a function to see what things are taking up your space, which are large files, which are um, smaller files and what they are. And then you can go ahead and uh, remove them. So they're not taking up so much space on your phone. Uh, you know, phone storage is usually at a premium and this helps to clarify that. So those are all of our uh, Facebook and Facebook owned news. Uh, moving over to Twitter before we go to uh, YouTube and then a few other little social media notes before we close out. So Twitter is reopening their account verification process. I got an email uh, last week about this and they are in essence uh, opening up a conversation space for people to go ahead and discuss this. If you go to blog.twitter.com, you can go ahead and find that post. And uh, and so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the verification process is when you see that little blue check mark that appears on your Twitter profiles. And uh, and so oh, I'm stepping back a moment. Uh, Robin from Start Startup to Growth is saying she loves the idea of using photos in Facebook and Instagram. She also realizes it can be challenging for services, especially those with confidentiality, confidentiality attached. Um, she can now spot a stock photo from a mile away. <laughs> yeah, stock photos aren't going away, by the way. And um, something to, to recognize is that there's a further challenge, not just in confidentiality, but also for boring businesses, right? So think about, and, and no offense against any of you that are insurance agents uh, or CPAs, accountants, uh, bookkeepers. Um, if you're someone who deals in medicine where it's not just confidentiality, but the part of the body may not be, you know, think of a gynecologist or think of, of someone who is doing um, you know, um, cosmetic surgery, or if you're a gastroenterologist, you know, you name it, right? There are all these areas where in medicine or other kinds of professions, they're not necessarily, you know, sexy, right? You know, think of, uh, I always joke in marketing, right? It's sex, babies, puppies, and kittens. Uh, you know, those are things that sell. And, uh, and, and uh, when we're talking about some of these businesses, you can't necessarily represent them well in uh, by showing people what you're doing. So you have to actually become tangential in terms of your imagery to make sure that it's both appropriate for, you know, mass uh, consumption, uh, because, you know, in the United States, at least we're fairly Puritan in or puritanical in the way in which we uh, see uh, visual content that might be considered taboo. Um, we have to be mindful of that fact and therefore uh, put up imagery that's going to be, uh, you know, related and useful. Uh, and so, you know, you'll see many times when you, you see like a, you know, a video that might be about something medically sensitive, you'll see a lotus flower um, as some kind of representation of health and wellness. Uh, so you'll see many of these images uh, that are uh, completely unrelated, but um, give you a sense of well-being. And we have to do probably a better job in, in especially the small business space of taking images of things that don't require us to show the client or show the outcome of the client while still representing. So you, you bring up a really great point, Robin. Uh, it is difficult at times, but there are many, many platforms out there that really give you uh, the ability to show what you're trying to show uh, without having to show the specific thing directly. Uh, what I like to do is I like to go to Google Images and not to use those images because those images are not necessarily uh, capable of being used for commercial purposes, but uh, going to Google Images and typing in related searches about your business. And, uh, and so then you start to see the various images that people have used over time and then you can see, okay, well, you know, if I'm if I'm a, a plumber, I can instead of showing a toilet bowl, I can show, uh, you know, kind of uh, zoom out to the home and and showing a happy homeowner or a happy family in the home, and uh, and and those things can be a little bit more useful um, or zoom, you know, in really well, right? So if you zoom in on the part of the of the of the toilet that is maybe broken, um, you don't have to see the whole toilet bowl. And so it's a little bit more useful by by either zooming in really, 
you know, to the to the micro level, right? So uh, that gives us a um, uh, avoiding out of the problem problematic pieces, um, or zooming out um, to a, a larger context so that people can go see those things. Um, Robin's also noting here she encourages clients to tell stories about themselves, lift the veil as much as they um, are comfortable with, and their hobbies, for example, their charity and community give back passions. Absolutely, I think that it's important for us all to find comfort. And what we do uh, related to uh, you know sharing online and uh, and then going from there. You know, I happen to actually be a fairly private person, so I'm not likely to share many more things outside of the business context. Uh, but other people are, and and that's if it's if it's related to the business, then that can be really useful. Uh, certainly, with regard to kind of peeling the onion layers uh, back about the business. So appreciate those comments, Robin. Uh, next up, uh, so uh, so Twitter is looking to. Uh, reopen its account verification. As I said, it's that blue check mark that you see next to accounts that tell you that it's quote unquote verified. And um, they're going to be putting out some new guidelines in 2021. And they're seeking feedback from the community by going to blog.twitter.com. Uh, I got this email and uh, it's weird uh, because they're uh, proposing new overview, new oversight over this uh, process. And uh, and so we'll see what happens. Uh, if anything, the checkmark process will become more strict, not less. And so not really quite sure that's um, going to be useful for those of us who perhaps have a smaller audience size on Twitter, uh, but are no less us. We're not not us. <laughs> and so why are we are not verified is... Um, really just a matter of a popularity contest. And you know what I think about popularity contests. Um, they're silly. Uh, next is um, Twitter also uh, has a, uh, launched this, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, playbook also that they are uh, providing. And in this, uh, this, uh, this was posted in UK, Ireland, but it's their 2020 uh, uh, event calendar. Uh, but it is a little bit of an interesting guide um, useful only now for the December uh, dates. I apologize, my dog is barking in the background because we've got a delivery. Uh, <laughs> this happens during a pandemic. Um, and so uh, the, the idea here is that they have provided some key dates in the system, but what I thought was the most useful um, piece here is actually that if you scroll down um, to the last page, they have a notes and Twitter ideas where they've actually created a fun little image of a tweet and uh, and have put in you know some like um, space here for you to ideate uh, tweets. And I just thought that was a really cool idea and uh, and something that I would definitely be um, thinking about using. You know, pulling this into uh, say Evernote or into another tool that you can uh, play and write on. As a canvas, um, I use Goodread, uh, GoodNotes. I'm sorry, um, on my iPad as well as Notability, so you can kind of write on them and kind of ideate Twitter, Twitter ideas. And I just thought that was a really good idea. So if you've ever had trouble with kind of ideating in that space, this may be a good tool for you to be able to do that. Uh, so uh, that's that. Uh, okay, so those are my uh, Twitter news items. I believe I've covered all of those, and uh, that leaves us with YouTube, and then a couple other um, closing points. Uh, YouTube has decided to expand into audio ads. And I just think this is hugely important to understand. YouTube has a uh, an audience that watches YouTube ads and uh, watches YouTube videos and therefore sees YouTube ads. But YouTube is also a place where a lot of people listen to uh to audio, even though it's a video platform. Case in point, YouTube has YouTube music. And so you can be on YouTube watching uh, YouTube videos, but you may also just turn on music in the background. And YouTube, because it's available on your, your computer, uh, whether that be at work or at home, you are, you are listening to YouTube, even though you're not watching the video, even though it is a video playing, I do this myself. I distribute, I you know, our my audio podcasts to YouTube, uh, and they're listen only. They're not necessarily video of the of the podcast. They're just the audio, and I use a static image or a waveform or whatever, and it just allows people who would want to listen and they don't want to uh, download a podcast app in order to listen to the podcast. They could still access it using YouTube. So this gives people that functionality. YouTube is extending audio ads to that platform. So they know videos that in essence are mostly just a static image and now can push ads to that inventory of videos. This means that those of you who have had trouble in the past doing ads, 
where you maybe are not um, comfortable producing video yourself, don't have the budget, or uh, just, you know, whatever reasons. Now you can actually do audio recordings and push ads via audio. This is going to be a huge opportunity for those who take advantage of it. It gives obviously a far uh, greater amount of ad inventory for the businesses. Um, and uh, just a no couple of notes from Google themselves talking about YouTube ads. They say 75% of audio ads campaigns drove a significant lift in brand awareness. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm just, I'm really excited about this. I think this is something that we're gonna be testing with regard to the web hosting uh, work that we're doing. And I wanna see more people find out about us through YouTube because this is where we're putting more content and uh, why not run ads uh, that give people that content as well. So just know that just because it's video doesn't mean that audio ads can't work and they're making that point here. YouTube is also testing uh, Audited, automated video chapters. So if you already don't know, Google uh, back in May had uh, released something called video chapters. So in the video that you're watching, uh, you on, on YouTube at least, you're, you're able to put little pieces at the bottom of the screen. So you know, you'll see little sections here that are uh, basically across the bottom and when you click on those sections, they take you to that section and you can name those. Basically, you can put in keywords that tell people what the quote unquote section of the video, what they call chapters of the video are. Uh, this is very, very powerful and, um, and useful, right? Because you could have, say, a longer video uh, and each of those videos can cover different parts and topics. Now people can watch those specific segments of the video and not the whole thing uh, so that they get the targeted content they're looking for. That also means YouTube on Google and its other search properties can show just that segment of video to those users and therefore you get more click-throughs. Uh, this is very powerful and obviously very useful. Now, uh, what they're doing is, is that they are um, um, trying to place those video chapters automatically uh, with their machine learning technology. And uh, so this is just interesting um, because, you know, it's obviously a little bit cumbersome. You have to do this manually, right? You have to go into the system and type in, you know, 005, you know, 027, you know, whatever in terms of coding the various chapters and putting in those pieces. Now they're taking what is the automated transcription plus the time signatures watching watching the content with their machine learning algorithm uh, technology and uh, placing those chapters in automatically. So very, very cool to see them uh, doing that. Uh, you may have noticed this also, and I, I saw I, I should have put this in with the Facebook content, uh, but just a, a wrap up item on the Facebook side. Instagram has now kind of uh, updated their application. You'll see that Instagram's home screen has changed recently. And now you will see across the bottom of the page, uh, your home button search or discovery, you'll see Instagram reels, uh, and then you'll see shop the shop icon and then the profile icon acro across the bottoms of the Instagram application. And you'll add all of your new items from the top of the page. You'll see that new plus icon and that'll allow you to create new posts, uh, reels, stories, and uh, and then uh, going live. So uh, you now have that those functionalities in those spaces. If you're looking at your profile, you'll also be able to click on the plus icon and uh, and launch a new story from there as well. But they're they're centralizing and I think it makes a lot of sense because it was always confusing to me uh, where you actually created a new story at particular times. Uh, and so I'm glad to see them cleaning up that interface. All right, so the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about today and then we'll close out, which is that uh, I, I found this article on, I believe it was Forbes and our Entrepreneur, I think. Um, and what they were talking about is five ways to prepare for the social audio future. And I meant to segue this from the YouTube audio ads, but you know, uh, <laughs> here we are. Uh, in essence, they were, um, they were talking, this article, it talks about the fact that we're going into a and kind of a, a social audio space. And uh, that is podcasts are becoming more popular and we're seeing more and more people interact with audio content and in a social way. And this article, and I'll, I'll link to this in the show notes and I, I just, I'm only showing it just to just to um, talk about it. But the idea here is that there is a whole host of opportunities in social audio that are on the precipice. Uh, so if we think about this from the perspective that we have uh, Twitter 
coming out with voice tweets. Uh, and so your capability of actually, uh, you know, sending tweets now that are audio only. Uh, Twitter already has the ability to go live using Periscope as audio only functionality. And uh, so though some of you are actually watching me on Periscope right now. And uh, so you're watching on Twitter, uh, but I could be going live to you and all you would see is a waveform and not my video. And uh, so you could already do that. Now, uh, Twitter is giving the capability of actually recording an audio message and putting that out there. Uh, I think for accessibility purposes and certainly for uh, social search engine optimization, it'll be important to auto transcribe those uh, voice notes as well, uh, those voice tweets as well. So that's gonna be a little bit problematical. Uh, but we're gonna see across the board a lot more audio content being produced across social networks and across the the web generally. Uh, I think it's gonna be very powerful and imperative upon you to start thinking about ways in which you can up your game from, if you're just doing text, how do you get that to audio? And if you can get it to audio, then you can get it to video. And I've long talked about the idea that in order to create enough content for the web, it's not about generating more content, but high quality content, and then uh, morphing those into different types and different you know, components of those, that larger piece of content, say if it's a three to 600 to 900 word blog post, you're now turning those individual, uh, you know, quotables from, you know, quoted text from the, from the blog post into images uh, for social media to lead back to the blog post. You're creating audio from the, from the uh, blog post, maybe by recording it yourself or using a tool to record the uh, text into audio, turning that audio into vi video using uh, other tools. And so you have a lot of uh, opportunity here to really expand the amount of content you're creating uh, that you're uh, that you're posting, but it's all generated based on the centralized piece of content that you've created on your website, on your blog, podcast, or otherwise. Uh, but it's it's directing uh, traffic back to you as opposed to just creating content for content's sake on social media. It should have a purpose. It should all be within the brand uh, scheme of your uh, thematic arc and. Um, we're just seeing so much of this happen now in social audio, and I'm really excited to see that more uh, news outlets are paying attention to it. And uh, just because podcasting is is popular and trendy now, uh, who knows what it'll be like in a, in a few years. But that doesn't mean that social audio is not here to stay. I think podcasting is here to stay. There's no question about that. Uh, but in terms of its great popularity in, in the ecosystem, I'm not really worried about that. It's brought great notoriety and great uh, celebrity to the platform and the, and the marketing channel. And so therefore it's done its job. It can go away and, mark, and podcasting will still be around. Uh, as long as there's an RSS feed, I'll be able to put out a podcast. And that means if you want to listen to me, you can, whether that be on the website or through a podcast app. And so this is very, very powerful stuff to start thinking about, not just podcasting, but how can you actually create audio, uh, which of course engages people. Um, if you're listening to me, you can't be listening to anyone else. Uh, there's a very powerful mechanism in, in place when we are listening, and listening is actually much easier to do than watching a video. For example, if you're walking down the street and you want to uh, watch a video, um, you are likely going to bump into something if you're not careful. Uh, listening to audio gives you the ability to see while still hearing uh, those social posts. So I think that there's a, a huge value here in posting these things in places uh, like Facebook and Instagram and otherwise uh, that really give an extension there. So I just wanted to make that point out for everybody. I think this is very, very um, uh uh, timely, and especially in this environment where we have more and more people coming onto social media and wanting to gain a a connection, a personalized communal connection with others. Uh, this gives you the opportunity to do that in a way that doesn't require you to have to, you know, get your hair done, put on makeup, put on a suit and tie, uh, whatnot. You're capable of interacting, engaging with people in a personalized, uh, very human and humane way uh, without having to worry about the visuals associated with it. So I'm just excited to see what the social audio space brings to the table. And I think it will be actually very powerful. And I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Uh, and so with that, that brings us to the end of Web and Beyond Live today. And so I wanted to thank you all for joining me here for this, uh, for this session. Um, just note that if you um, want to, you can uh, join us every Monday uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern for now. I mean, we may change it in 2021, but right now um, this time works for us. Uh, we are... Um, 
going to have our first, uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, we're going to have our first, um, I'm sorry, our last, <laughs> our last uh, virtual roundtable, small business virtual roundtable of the year tomorrow. So you, if you're listening to this in the podcast feed, uh, it is happening at noon uh, and uh, 12 one at noon uh, Eastern. And that is preparing your business for 2021. And we're gonna have a conversation around what we should be doing to prepare for 2021. Uh, right after that on Thursday, I'll be doing my annual small business digital marketing in 2021 webinar, where I'll be covering all of the various trends that I've seen in uh, the past year and the ones that I've seen uh, coming up in 2021, kind of my predictions and other experts predictions about what's gonna be happening in 2021 to pay attention to as a small business so you can really get the, a leg up in your planning. We've already um, archetyped our content marketing calendar for 2021 at W3 Consulting and really looking forward to what we're developing and we're paying attention to these trends to be able to take advantage of them. Uh, as well, uh, on 12-17 will be our last Web and Beyond webinar, uh, and that will be uh, lessons from a year going live. All the lessons I've learned from doing this live stream every every uh, week uh, with you all, uh, including the you know the warts <laughs> of uh, dogs barking in the background during a pandemic and all these other fun things, uh, not being able to go to the office and uh, be in a quiet environment. Uh, but um, this has been a, a real educational process, and I wanted to share with you all uh, what I've learned in that process. Uh, of course. Healthcare.gov, the open enrollment is still open. You've got another uh, 15, 16 days before it closes. So if you or someone you know needs um, to be insured for 2021, uh, you can go ahead and get healthcare coverage there at healthcare.gov. Uh, so help help a, help a solopreneur, help a micropreneur, help someone who might be unemployed out by letting them know that that is still open. And uh, last but not least, um, I have the Web and Beyond community. That is our uh, small business uh, digital marketing and operations on the web uh, digital community. And so you can join us going by going to www.webandbeyond.community. And so uh, you can just uh, find that again by going to www.webandbeyond.community. We're small and we're growing. And in 2021, I'd love to grow this into a much larger uh, community so that we can uh, share and grow together and uh, learn all about digital marketing that is marketing and managing on the web and beyond uh, better. So uh, feel free to join us there. If you fill out the little form, you'll then get approved and you'll be in. Okay, we have come to the time of the end of our web and beyond for this week. As I said, each week we do this um, typically on Mondays at 11 a.m. Um, if you've enjoyed the live stream, please use the thumbs up icon that helps us expand our small business audience and small business friends. And so thank you for doing that. Um, if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. If you um, are not on uh, YouTube, while you are watching or listening to this, you can always tweet or message me at W3 Consulting, W the number three consulting on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. <laughs> um, thanks so much for spending this Web and Beyond Live with me. I'm Ray Sidney Smith. On behalf of W3 Consulting and our subsidiary, W3C Web Services, have a great week ahead, marketing and managing on the Web and Beyond. Take care, everybody.